the Sony a7C re-sparked my love for photography. If you've seen my previous videos, you know that I shoot both photo and video with the a7C for professional and recreational photography. A lot of people ask me why I went with the Sony a7C for photography since there are a lot of drawbacks to it. A lot of people bring up the tiny EVF. Personally, I don't see a problem with it. Um, after going out and shooting with it a couple times, I really just got completely used to it. After going out and shooting with it just once or twice, I got completely used to the EVF. I upgraded from the Sony a7R 2 and uh, that camera came out back in 2015. I got it in 2017 and I got this camera when it released. So I've been shooting with it for almost a year now. The a7R 2 was an amazing camera, but it was kind of time for an upgrade considering I do a lot of video work too. And the Sony a7C, when it was announced, it just made complete sense for me because it does both photo and video extremely well. Now, when I go back and use the a7R 2 and I'm looking through the EVF, I find myself having to look around at the corners to see what all is in frame. But on this camera, the viewfinder is just small enough to where it's a concentrated view in the center and I can see everything that's in frame. And I really like that. Regardless of that, some people might still not like the smaller EVF, but personally, it is perfect for me, and I'm just talking about my experiences with the camera. So if you have a different experience with the camera, please let me know. So that's the only real downside I can think of. The other thing is the shutter speed it only goes up to 1 4,000th of a second, which is not the best if you're shooting uh, broad daylight, if you're using a, a low aperture, but if you're shooting at like f2.8 or higher, you're perfectly fine and it's not a problem. The first time I saw the leaked images of the Sony a7C, I instantly fell in love with it. My very first camera was the Sony a6000, the silver model. So seeing this, seeing the silver version of this, it made me so excited and I knew as soon as it came out, I had to buy it, regardless of the specs, but it ended up working out like extremely well. The silver model just brings that perfect blend of retro to a modern camera and I absolutely love it and honestly it might be half the reason I love this camera so much besides its practicality for my uses. The second reason I absolutely love this camera is I love rangefinder styled cameras. To me they're just way more comfortable to shoot with because I wear a hat most of the time and if the you're using the EVF that's in the center, you're having to bring it up and my hat is constantly getting pushed up and I'm having to readjust it and bring it back down. But with this camera, it just sits perfectly right here and I never have to adjust my hat. So that's a tiny thing and that's just me. And that's also if you just shoot a lot of vertical photos. I tried to break the habit of having to readjust my hat, but I couldn't do it, so. The third reason I really love this camera, I'm just gonna combine a lot of smaller things, which are actually pretty big things. Um, Upgrades from like say the a7 III, which I've used a decent bit. I don't personally own one. Um, obviously the flip out screen is huge. Um, it has better autofocus and tracking. The touch tracking is absolutely amazing. And the camera has improved um, color science. After all of that, this camera really did make me fall back in love with photography again. Um, it's seriously just so much fun to use. It's small, it's compact. Um, especially coming from my a7R2 that I had a battery grip on, could have taken it off, but the battery life on that camera is just so absolutely terrible. There was no point in ever taking it off because you're going to just be swapping batteries every 15 minutes. And I recommend everyone stop hating on this camera and just try one out and let me know what you think. My primary setup for this camera is the 35 millimeter G Master lens. I absolutely love this lens and it's the perfect combo. It's not too big, it's a very small camera and the lens is one of the smallest uh, 35 millimeter 1.4s on the market. So for me, it is absolutely perfect as my go-to setup for just about any style shoot, uh, portraits, street photography, anything else. Only thing I can say about this grip, it is a little snug in there with your finger fitting it in between a wider lens and the grip. But uh, overall, if you're using a smaller lens, like the Rokinon 35mm 2.8, which is perfect for street photography, super low key. I absolutely love this setup for street photography. The Rokinon lens is the perfect compact lens for this camera. Overall, the 35mm 1.4 G Master lens is my favorite lens to use on this camera. It's uh, the perfect combo, not too big. It's not too front heavy, so it doesn't weigh down the camera too much. 
Um, it is heavier than the camera though, so, but I mean, this camera is so light, what do you expect, honestly? If you're interested in seeing more photos and video that I've shot with this camera right here in this lens, you can check out the link in the description or probably at the end of this video, I'll have it. Um, I went down to the beaches here in North Carolina and shot a really cool video that I'm really proud of. So I just suggest everyone going and checking that out. But I appreciate everyone that stuck around and watched this entire video. Um, have a great day. Go out and take some photos.